And we're back. We're back. Episode 15, AI for Entrepreneurs. Another week, another podcast, and a lot going on in the world of AI. My name is Ivan Lee. I'm your host, along with my good friend, business partner, Christopher Lang, fellow AI nerd. Um, Let's go. It's going to be a fun episode, man. Today's main topic is faceless YouTube pages, faceless faceless social media pages, really. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot outside of just YouTube. Um, it's one of the new things that's really taking over the online marketing world by storm, especially with the advent of artificial intelligence, something that Chris has been dabbling with. And um look forward to really digging deeper into that topic. But first, as always, um, Chris, say, say what's up to the people, man. How you what up, what up? Yeah, we're going to start with uh, last week in AI or this week in AI or AI news or whatever we call this segment now. <laughs> uh, I can never seem to remember. Uh, we got a couple of uh, interesting things. Uh, nothing we can use, nothing we can really play with, but some really interesting news in the world of AI. The first being that there's been a leak, an open AI leak of leak. their roadmap to AGI what their oh. kind of definition and how they're thinking about AI. And let me actually share my screen here. Uh, so this is Forbes actually writing about it. So they have five steps uh, that they consider, you know, are, are the basic stepping stones to AGI. And we're sitting at step one right now. We're level one, which is conversational AI. That's, that's where we are. Chat bots, open, you know, chat GPT. Then they go to level two, which is reasoning AI. So you can see here, apparently coming in the near future, this is when systems referred to as reasoners can perform basic problem solving tasks comparable to humans with a doctorate level education, but without access to tools. So this is a, like a massive, massive step forward from, you know, question answer type of things to... The, the to the AI actually being able to have a thought process and reason things out rather than just answering with a, a predictive as to what the answer should be. Right. Uh, so according to the Hacker News Forum, the jump from level one to level two is significant as it involves a transition from basic and limited capabilities to a more comprehensive and human-like proficiency. What, what this, really caught me is the doctorate, doctorate level education. So yes. now think about the ramifications of that, right? Like you can have scientists, uh, medical professionals, professionals, right? And so now this AI can emulate a doctor. And now not only just predict based off of the text you feed it, but based off of its reasoning with a doctorate level thought process, Imagine like the ramifications of that in terms of science, in terms of medicine, in terms of, you know, all those type of things that 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 is pretty incredible. And that's just level two. What's and level that's three just like? level two. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, not quite there yet, but that's that's the stage that they're working on now. So then we get to level three, which is autonomous, which I know we've talked about before. We definitely cover that during Geek Week. Um uh, you know, kind of where we see the future is. And that's the these reasoning agents being able to go out and do things on their own. So you can give it a specific task and then you don't need to tell it every single step that has to happen in between. It'll be able to go out and do that. It will have access to the different tools and systems and ecosystems that it needs. If not, it'll, you know, kind of tell you like, hey, I'm going to need access to X, Y, and Z. But But it basically runs on itself like you would a real true human employee. You give it a task and you expect it to be able to go figure out how to do that task. Right. And that's pretty cool. The, the example that they use is um, imagine having some of those around your business while you take a vacation. Right. Like, like think about that. Like you can literally just leave your AI, your business is on. Someone calls the AI is smart enough to realize like, okay, um, if it's a sales call, we're going to ask you know some discovery questions and then we're going to jot down some notes and then we're going to forward it to the right human to take whatever next steps like that 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 has a lot of ramifications. not only that but from a return side especially depending on your business like in our case let's say a client reaches out and needs new coding done if 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 it's at this level where it's not only has reasoning but it's also autonomous and has access to say client ecosystems it could go write the code and publish it to a staging development and then email the client and say hey this system has been updated or the code has been updated. Please take a look and send me your feedback. It could right. do the, the actual, the, the, you know, this is where it's going to get closer to starting to really take people's jobs. 
And that's crazy. Um, it's going to create, but it's going to create a lot of opportunities because now from as an entrepreneur, as someone who has ideas and businesses, like you, it, it's going to get easier than ever to be able to like start, to be able to put together a team, to be able to, you know, start a business, provide service. Yep. Then the game in terms of competition between these businesses is going to really change because it's not necessarily the barrier of entry of, can I do this service? We all can do the service using AI. The barrier entry now is going to be like, you know, connecting with other humans and generating, generating those leads, generating those, that business. It's, it's an interesting time to be an entrepreneur. And I think even now this is only level three. And I think even just, just at this level, I know we've spoken before about the first billion dollar solopreneur or, you know, sole proprietor business. It, it happens at this level. With AI that this, this is the level, right? You can replace entire teams of, of staff from project management to client communications to sales with AI agents that are fully autonomous. That's, that's where this happens. But then we go to number four, which is innovating AI. So an AI that can not only do things mm -hmm. that are already been discovered, but discover new things. So the leaps and bounds that'll come, this is where cancer is getting cured. This is right. where disease is going to become non a thing and like like this is where the the smartest thing in the world is now finding new ways to do things right. and that's already kind of happening at a new level but imagine an autonomous robot like ai whose only job is to work on the problem of cure cancer or solve these unsolvable physics problems right. and that's all it does no, that's powerful that's powerful in terms of just innovating because now think about it right a lot of times we talk about entrepreneurs and they, 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 they tend to work in their business versus on their business, exactly. right? You get really caught up in the day-to-day -day job of fulfilling whatever orders and just doing the processes of your business. Imagine having the world's smartest intelligence, the world's smartest business coach, operations manager, uh, supply chain expert, right? Looking at your business at all times, understanding all the different aspects of your business and constantly coming up with ideas like, hey, if we do X, Y, Z, it'll make the process of this and that become even more efficient and more profitable. And just constantly giving you those insights, that's, that's, that's where, yeah, that, that's, that's huge. That's going to be huge. Not only that, but this is, this is where CEOs are going to get replaced. You're not going to, this is going to be able to come up with the idea on its own and then go and execute it on its own. It doesn't even need a CEO to think about how the business is doing, how to mo modify the business structure in order to do it, because that's what this autonomous AI is going to be doing. I see. I don't think it's an innovate, but that's the thing. It's, it's an innovator. No, like, I get it. Here. I get it. I get it. But I don't think that replaces the CEO, right? Like, I think I it would a hundred percent, not just running your processes, but improving them, not just following rules and making predictions of the next word, but yeah. critically thinking about how to do a better job and achieve the goal in a more effective and efficient way. That's what a CEO does. It, it is. It is. But I, but I see AI, I see this type of AI being more so a tool for CEO. Right. Like at the end of the day, I still think like just humans being humans, we're going to need like humans to be ahead of a company. Right. Just the buck got to stop at somebody. Right. You know, I don't I don't want to be investing in some huge company and it's just some AI running that company like that. I mean, I need someone managing that AI. Right. If, if, if there's a shareholder meeting, I need to like get be mad at somebody. Right. Like, well, not once we reach level five like, here. <laughs> That's okay. where organizations, the final stage of super AI involves artificial intelligence that is capable of performing the work of an entire organization. Every person you currently have, every function carried out, but performed by agents that work together, make improvements, and run everything required without a human in sight. That is level five. That is pure AGI. That, and that's, that's where I, I, we talked about this a couple of times where, where it is, and, and I, it, this confirms even open AI is thinking that this is going to get to a point where humans are not required or needed anymore. That is level five. That is true AGI where we, other once you let it go and you give it its core goal, it now knows how to do it. It does everything all on its own. Humans, yeah. including CEOs of companies are going to be completely worthless. And that's where I think we're going to start to run into some, some crazy times if that gets out into the wrong hands or the public hands. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I still don't believe that humans would be worthless in that scenario, right? Like you can have a you can have 
all the tools you can have, but there's still, I don't know. I feel like the, the human element, just by the nature of like, it's human selling to humans at the end of the day, it's humans doing services for humans like this. You can't, you can't run away from the human part because we're humans using it. You get what I'm saying? So like from a service standpoint, yeah, I could, we could build a web development company that's, you know, ran 99% using AI, especially if we're at level five, but there's still that human to human element that I feel like is always going to be unavoidable. But, but would there need to be? Because now at this point, it's really, let's see it. But at this point is where I feel humans become worthless because you have this AI company company fully run by an AI Mm -hmm. doing business for another AI company doing business that's doing business with other AI companies short of things like general food and housing humans aren't really going to have anything to contribute that the AI is not going to be able to do faster and better. It's going to be able to outthink us. Uh, In fact, just chat GPT at its current level right now can already outthink. I want to say on a conservative guess, 80% of all humans on earth right now, there's a lot of really, really, really stupid people. So it can already outthink about 80% of all humans on Earth, and that's at level one. By the time it gets to this phase, and that's where I say the Terminator scenario, it's it's going to realize it doesn't need us anymore. And I don't want to go too much into that Terminator scenario. But even OpenAI is saying that like level five is where humans are no longer needed. Yeah, I just don't, I don't, I don't, you know, you, you, you also look at like politics and you look at, um, just, I'd much rather have an AI running our country than most of the people or any human being that's currently running our country. Well, no, no, no and I get that. But what I'm saying, though, <laughs> is that, like, just even when you think about politics and jobs and just how that how that whole stuff works, right? Like, you know, the whole push to keep jobs in America, keep people employed. So I, even, like, politically, I just don't see it getting to that point to where it's even politically feasible to X out humans. Oh, no, I don't think this will actually ever be something that gets really. This will be something governments control. Mm-hmm. This will be so. This one, I don't think level five is anything that's ever going to be a publicly accessible tool. I think it's something that's that's going to be used by world world leaders, uh, I think it massive, will be. massive corporations. I think it will, because again, just because you have a lot of power, just because you have a great tool, like think about a computer, right? And if you think about a computer, you know, our iPhones are more powerful than what NASA had when they first went to the space and power, new technology, new tools, new ability to do things. um, That's always going to keep coming out, but humans, I, I don't know. I just, I just feel like, you know, us as humans were, you know, give us the tools, but it doesn't necessarily mean we can do, all these great things with these tools, right? Like I can kind of do AGI now, even with just AI, right? There's a lot you can do with AI right now, but not everyone's necessarily going to use that AI. Not everyone has ideas or concepts or, you know, the skill set to take that AI and accomplish certain things. So just because you have AGI, I just don't think everyone's even going to be able to still use it, right? It's still a lot to get different agents to work together. And just it's still, it's still a process, right? It's still, it's still, it's a little bit easier to bring that idea out of your head, but it's still a process of bringing that idea out of your head and executing on it. True, true, true. And the other thing is, I think we can't really form a valid opinion on what level five is going to look like because we're still in level one. Right. Like we don't know what level two is going to look like. Those reasoning AI bots may be so incredibly mind blowing. That we like, like everyone may decide like, like, all right, like I'm already useless and we're at level two. Uh, And there are going to be people once it hits level two, there's, there's people that are relatively useless. Their job role is relatively useless now. Yeah. So by the time we hit level two, so by the time we're at level four, where we're heading towards level five, I I, like until we get there, until we really, really see what that world looks like. I don't think we can even short of a sci-fi story yes. fictional yeah. story guess being kind of played out in our heads i don't think we can even begin to fathom what that world looks like when we hit true level five agi right so but so that's that that's the leak this is how open ai themselves is thinking about the roadmap of ai and what they're actively working on um they're working on level two right now that's where they're trying to get to next 
That's interesting. I'm glad you shared that with us. So our next story, we're going to step away from OpenAI-ish for a little bit. And we have Microsoft. So Microsoft released a new AI system in true Microsoft OpenAI, you know, AI fashion. Um, They showed you this exists, but you can't play with it, use it, or demo it at all. But it's, it's a new AI system, Spreadsheet LMM, LLM. And it unlocks insights from spreadsheets, boosting enterprise productivity. Now, when I put this out there, because it was new, uh, I recently got released. And I guess it's a specially trained language model just on data analysis through spreadsheets. But without a demo, without, I mean, there's a white paper and it says some cool things, but I I read through it-ish. I skimmed it. But I can already do data analysis and do spreadsheets with the current version of ChatGPT with the optimized AI tool suite. Like it can already do data analysis. Like every large model can do data analysis already by give, by feeding it spreadsheets. In fact, a, a good chunk of the data work that I do uh, for not only our businesses, but for clients, I use these AI models to do a lot of the work for me. So I don't know how much better it could possibly get than that, but I guess this is a specialty model yeah. that maybe well, one day we'll get a demo of. <laughs> yeah, prompted specifically for spreadsheets, uh, trained specifically on spreadsheets. I can, I can see, and it's also Microsoft, right? Which um, let's face it, Excel is one of the main spreadsheet apps. So I can see it working just a little bit better. Um, you know, tweaking it specifically for spreadsheets. Yeah, yeah, th- I, I could see that. And it also looks like the, it's a specifically an enterprise LLM. Mm. So for larger organizations, like small organizations uh, that may have, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 records, smaller spreadsheets, you know, ChatGPT, things like that would work okay. But I, I guess once you get on the enterprise, like if you're Target, I'm sure they they have spreadsheets that are hundreds of millions of record. Like it, it reaches right. like max level of things. So if this is trained specifically to like compress that data, use it and really analyze it in a better way. Because there's also times where even with you, you just you have to really double check a lot of the work, especially on spreadsheets. Did it miss something? Did it misinterpret it? So right, right, right. I could see where once we get our hands on this, th- this may come in handy, but, and you can already do a minuscule version of what it does now. So thought it was interesting. It's brandy new. So thought I'd, I'd mention I like it specialty. again. I like, I like specialty AI. I like, I like yeah. things that are trained specifically on what it is you're trying to accomplish. Just, you know, it, it guys, like you can do a lot with just general AI, but like, even when I prompt my AI, I prompt it to be a, a, an expert or specifically good at whatever specific thing you or whatever task you're working on. Right. Exactly. So now we're going to jump back into the world of open AI. Okay. So and we're going to talk about open AI's very, very exclusive secret project. This is another leak that came out of open AI. So someone was not that secret now. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. under code name strawberry and this is where again we talked about the reasoning technology uh they're working on that that level two and there's a specific part in here that i want to highlight um is this it yes so how strawberry works is a tightly kept secret even within open ai the person said the document describes a project that uses strawberry models with the aim of enabling the company's ai to not just generate answers to queries but plan ahead enough to navigate the internet autonomously oh, and reliably cool. to perform what OpenAI terms deep research, according to the source. So it'll basically, if you ask it a query, it's going to actually be able to go do like deep, deep analysis and fully, fully understand the topic before it starts formulating responses. Um they didn't actually directly answer any strawberry. It used to be called Project Q. Um, but, but this is them start, this is them working on that reasoning level two model already, where it's going to be able to like take some autonomous actions and really, really go deep dive and research and improve on its own knowledge base before answering questions or to learn about a topic. So you may say you're an expert in, you know, in, in, writing email copy, blah, 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 blah. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to go research everything it can about writing email copy and then formulate the best possible strategy based on what you're trying to do based on 
all of the knowledge rather than the first two or three search results, like is what we're really what you see now when any of these AIs, including our own, search the web. It can really kind of prioritize and pick and choose some of the information and work from it. But to be really be able to autonomously go and dig or even be able to set it up like, um, I guess, in your own GPT way, like you're an expert on email marketing and then you wait. 12 hours while it goes out and becomes an expert on AI marketing That's cool. or on email That's marketing. Really cool. And now you're ready to use it uh, is, is a real good use case. I see for something like that. Yeah. That's really cool. I like that. I like that concept. Like go train yourself. Right, right, right. Go like, like we, like we just talked about those specialty trained models, but now imagine the AI being able to go specialty train itself. Yeah. That's cool. That's super cool. So that is Project Strawberry. Uh, I know I like Sam must have pissed someone off. <laughs> yeah, I like that name, Strawberry. Yeah, Sam Altman like, must have pissed someone off for all these leaks. To yeah, he got, he got a lot of leaks, thing. man. They, 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 got a, they got a hole in their ship right now. <laughs> yeah, they, they need to patch that up. I mean, for our sake, I'm pretty glad we get all this information. But for, uh, for his sake, they, they should probably figure out who's leaking all this stuff. Yeah. So that's it for last week in AI. Do you have any final thoughts on any of this? Um, I mean, it's just, it's moving so fast and I'm really excited about strawberry, just the concept of being able to like, you know, tell the AI, like you're an expert at this or go, go do autonomous, autonomous, deep research. Mm -hmm. Like, think about that. Right. So like from a personal level, I go down so many little rabbit holes myself to be able to just have the AI do it for me to save so much time to, um, from a, from a, you know, growth self-growth standpoint from an entrepreneurial standpoint let's say we want to we're, we're, we're thinking about getting into a new market and we want the ai to do some research for us deep mm -hmm. research for us right and to be able to do that not necessarily direct it but let it just kind of do what it needs to do and and reason in terms of what's the next thing it should research right let's say we're comparing think about getting into a new market with web development in a new country right and it's going to, the AI, we tell the AI to do this research and the AI is going to start researching the new company, the, the, the new, the, the, that market, the population, the opportunities, the SWOT analysis, it's going to start telling itself what it needs to do next in order to get mm -hmm. that. That's that cool. That is really cool. Um, Not only that, but think about it like, like, all right, you're an expert in writing social media content. Go and it goes. Go study the top viral video, every single mm. viral video that has ever been on TikTok, and formulate the perfect architecture for viral videos. Right, right. And right, it goes right. and does that for 12, 24 hours, and and watches every single video that's had a million views or more on TikTok. Yeah. That's cool. And then can put together a whole architecture based on all of that information. Humans would take yeah. years to pour through that data. Right, 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 right. Exactly. Then right now, you got to rely on what Mr. Beast says. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, cool. That's really cool. And that's it. So normally now we'd go into our mystery segment, but we don't have one today. So we're going to jump over into our main topic, which, like Ivan said earlier, is AI and faceless social media content. Not YouTube specifically, but faceless social media. And I'm sure... Anyone watching this podcast has seen faceless social media accounts. You got, you know, quotes with music in the background, um, sayings with videos or, you know, even just clips of TV shows that play where no one shows their face, basically, but they have monetized social media accounts. So high arching level, Ivan, what, what, what are your thoughts on faceless social media? So I think a lot of people watching this may not even know what it is, right? We come across it all the time, but we don't necessarily think of it that way, right? So, for example, I post a lot of things on my social media about entrepreneurship, about life, about motivation, um, self-growth, etc. And a lot of times the things I post in my stories come from a faceless YouTube page or faceless social media page, right? It might be a little quote that just says something that's, you know, I find profound and I'll share that quote on, on my story. What we don't, and a lot of us do this, right? We'll, we'll all come across little quotes or little things that, that mean something to us or like what you said, they right? resonate, they resonate or like a little image with a little saying or something. Mm -hmm. What we don't realize is that these 
these are designed that way to be shared that way and to be consumed that way, right? Like the person behind that page is usually has a whole theme page that, with a bunch of quotes about that particular theme. So for example, I, you know, I'm really into like, again, entrepreneurship. If I go, I may see a great quote, I'll click into that quote. That person's page is just nothing but great quotes. And the benefit to that is that it's very niche. It's very themed. The, the creator behind that page, they don't have to sit there and figure out how to make videos and, and, and putting their face on camera, right? They just wake up every day, create a, create a, create a post, uh, put their quote there, put it out there. Right. And for those people like me who do put put their face on video, that gives me some extra content that I can now share that doesn't necessarily involve my face on video. Right. Like, right, right, I'm right. Filling the blanks with, you know, on my story. I can't make a I can't make a video post every story. Right. I got to still share information. I still want to share my message. Sometimes I just you know scroll through Instagram. and I just find quotes that resonate and I just share those at, just as a way to keep adding content. and continue my story and the messaging that I'm trying to, you know, convey to the world. So I find them quite helpful. I use them a lot. Um, and, it, and it's, it's definitely something I think more people should understand how to do because we all, there's so many niches within it, right? Like, Oh yeah. Entrepreneurship is just one lane. I use the game of Thrones example, but like, Remember, Game of Thrones was a very popular thing, right? I'm sure there's faceless YouTube pages or so social media pages that just talk about Game of Thrones. I have no you doubt. Know, anything that you are passionate about, anything that you wake up and want to talk about on a regular basis anyways, you can make it. There's other people out there just like you who are passionate about the same topic. Yep. So if that's something that you want to share and talk about anyways, why not just put it out there? I think ESPN, I think basketball, right? There's so many people that are into, into basketball. Think about all the faceless basketball pages. And there's niches even within that. I know I'm going on for a little long, but I'm about to land a plane. But there's, <laughs> there's niches even within that, right? So, for example, you can make a faceless, ba a faceless page that just shows basketball highlights. Mm -hmm. Or you can niche it down even further and just show really good crossovers, right? Or you can niche it down and just show like good defensive plays, blocks, or just dunks, right? You can, or just, just show, show Jordan play. footage. You just can, a vintage Jordan page, footage. Just Jordan. Exactly. It makes me sad to call Jordan vintage, but vintage Jordan footage. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so the thing is, is like, no matter what your hobby is, whether it's video games, love, life, self growth, working out, um, nutrition, parenting, whatever it may be. Whatever it is, yeah. There's so much content that can be put out about that topic and there's so many other people in the audience in the world who are looking for content or even just little motivational quotes about that topic that it's kind of like an untapped unlimited opportunity no no i think that was really really well said um there's actually there's a couple of things that i want to talk about when it comes to social space the social and the first obviously revolving around ai is a lot of creators nowadays, uh, uh, mainly the ones that put their face on camera, where their whole social presence is them talking to the viewers through the camera, uh, or they record, yeah, or they record, um, you know, they do produce videos, Mr. Beast style things, where where they do, and 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 there's a place for that on social media, but a lot of them are starting to gripe about, you know, social media is just getting full of AI content nowadays. And while I understand because, you know, they're putting in all this time, this money, uh, they're investing in creating the content that users are engaging with, users still engage with this faceless content, this AI generated content, even though, and while it may be AI generated, so, and that's, that's kind of the other thing that I want to, I want to touch on is while it may still, while it may be AI generated, there's still a lot of, work that the person behind that account has to actually do right. from first getting and get you know like while they may not physically write the content themselves we just coming uh, and, the and it depends on the face of the ones that people that just share clips of tv shows um while great they may monetize their account uh probably not because they're using copyright material um th those are a little bit annoying but people that are doing 
thing where, where there's a script, there's something, there's spoken word, there's, you know, something, there's more involved to it. There's still a lot of work from having to make sure that the script is going to resonate with the audience, make sure that the script speaks in a certain way. You can retain your audience, you can grab their attention, making sure that any imagery or videos that, that are placed in it align with the messaging. So there's still a lot of work that goes behind right. creating that finished product that gets posts sometimes more let more sometimes less you know like i can make a faceless video in five four five minutes and some could take four or five hours depending on the type of content but while it is a mostly ai generated content there's still that human element to put together and package up the finished product that right. you're watching and i think that's what people who consume this type of content are really resonating with because like for in your case like the entrepreneurial things like if you're not an entrepreneur, or if you haven't experienced it, if you don't know someone who's an entrepreneur, you could just throw out a million entrepreneur quotes, but they're not going to resonate with the audience of entrepreneurs. So you need right. to have, you need to make sure that messaging exists in there. So you still need that human element to create these. Yeah, you got to have the passion. You have to have a passion for whatever it is you're talking about. It has to be something that you're genuinely, truly interested in. Um, that's something I, 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 it's a piece of advice that I give most uh entrepreneurs that i speak with especially those in the ideation phase who are just trying to figure out like what should i talk about what mm -hmm. what, what what should be my niche like let it be something that you're really into right because if you're really right. into whatever it is you're talking about you're going to have certain levels of insight and understanding of that audience because you are that audience right like if right. you're really big into game of thrones you're going to understand how other people who are big into game of thrones what they're into, what they look for, what would catch their attention. I'm like a 50, 50 person on game of thrones. Like I like it, but I'm not necessarily obsessed with it. So I'm not going to have, I'm not going to go in chat rooms to discuss what happened last week. I don't even know where those chat rooms are. I don't necessarily know where to reach other people who are really big into game of thrones. I don't follow those pages. I don't follow other influencers who talk about it. They right? Exist. If you do, if you do, now, when you try to get your stuff out there, you know other influencers who you may want to partner with. You know other chat rooms where you may want to go and promote your stuff. You know where people like you hang out at. You know what messages resonate. You know all the little inside jokes that only fans of Game of Thrones would recognize, mm -hmm. right? So, like, that gives you such a huge advantage. It's like what you said, even from an entrepreneurial level, right? Like, I we've been entrepreneurs for so long. We know how to speak to us. We right, know the exactly. pain points of being an entrepreneur. We know the funny little inside jokes of being an entrepreneur, the little things that we thought would be one way when we first started and then realized along the path, like every entrepreneur, like, oh, this might be a little bit harder than I first thought it would be. Uh, like, we know all those things. We, we live that we have those shared experiences. So speaking to other entrepreneurs becomes a much more efficient, fluent conversation. Right. And even being able to generate the content using AI, you know, like AI could AI can spit out garbage, garbage in, garbage yep. out. We say it yep. all the time. So it could just spit out like like you could say, like, oh, I'm going to do a, you know, a Game of Thrones faceless social. And I'm like, oh, John had that Jon Snow, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, <clears throat> excuse me. That, that's not going to be engaging for that for the actual audience. Like, it's not unless you can give it real detailed instruction it's garbage in garbage out yeah, so that, that human element in there that and and even a lot of the same work goes into creating these channels as if you were going to be on camera whether you're going to be a talking head video where you know just like this kind of like this format is or if you're going to do like a produced you're scripting and you're going to tell a story and you're you know you're going to script the shots um, it, a lot of the same work goes into that because you still need to create the story. You need to perfect the story. You need to figure out what the shots are going to be, what the imagery is going to be that reflects what's being said, what music is going to go in the background to make sure, you know, what sound effects, things like that all still need to be planned out. Really what, what happens a lot of times is you're really just using the AI to create, say, create the images or help mm -hmm. you write the script because you might not be the best writer or right. storyteller, but you have a story you want to tell. So using AI to do the parts and subsidize the work that you can't do yourself, I, I don't think that really takes anything away from the creators that are doing 
you know, actually, you know, they may have a $10,000 camera and a whole studio set up, which is going to make them produce better quality video. Whereas the next person who doesn't want to show their face, maybe they're self-conscious, maybe they're just like me. And I hate that this, this is my least favorite thing to do. <clears throat> I hate having to be on camera, set everything up. And, but, um, now, now, if I could give the same message that I would want to give if I were speaking on camera, but I could use some AI generated images, some nice, some nice music and like an AI voiceover script. That's better for me. Right. So so but but it doesn't take away from the work that's being put into that channel. You still need to learn what at like TikTok, for example, you still need to learn how to create engaging content for the audience on TikTok. You still need to research hashtags and how to get in front of like how that platform works, be it TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. There's still a lot of behind the scenes work that I think anyone, especially the people, I don't know, I'm sure you've seen them. There's a lot of people like, oh, so I go to work and I do this and boom, my workday's done in 10 minutes and I have a right. monetized Facebook account. Uh, or a monetized YouTube account, and I'll show you how to do it for a simple fee of your soul and seven hundred dollars. <laughs> and the part that they always leave out of all of that is how much work actually goes into it. Like they they show you the end result after they've put a year and a half in and figured it out and, and figured it out and, and did the trial and error and make it seem like you could just be where they are within a week. Yeah. Well. So let's 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 give people some value, right? They, y'all made it this far. Let's give them some value because I know you've been dabbling with um, uh, your own. Some, some I have been. I have own, been own faceless uh, pages. Um, so let's just give someone advice in terms of if they were looking to explore that opportunity. What what should they do? What what, what would be our advice to them right now? I so the first bit of advice I'd give is. I, I, we've mentioned it already, pick a niche that you're passionate about, because yeah. even if it's a faceless account, if it's something that you're not passionate about, you're going to get bored of it. You're not going to so, want to talk about it every day. What You're not going to want to talk about it every well, day. And even though like AI content. might be doing a lot of the talking, you still yeah. have to plan it. Uh, like, like, so for instance, one of the ones that I'm doing right now is it's just motivational stuff, mindset, positivity, mm -hmm. which, which not only can do, am I okay with talking about that? Because you kind of need that positivity, that mo that mindset, that motivation, especially if you want to get up every day and be an entrepreneur, right. um, right. creating this content, it, it's almost like speaking to me sometimes it's like, Oh, have you been feeling down and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I have. Well, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, the content like even resonates with me. So I'll put a little bit more oomph into making it resonate with the audience because I know like the message itself resonates with me. Right. So make sure that the niche that you're going to work on or the, the, the content they're going to create is something that you're, you're absolutely passionate about. Uh, the second bit of advice is do your research on the available tools that you can use because there's so many different tools there's some where you can literally just click one button and it'll do everything for you uh you know it'll write a script it'll put a video together it'll add hashtags it'll auto post it for you now is the content that it's going to spit out be the best possible content that's going to resonate with your audience probably not but it will be it'll be fast so it, it, it the find the tools that work for the amount of time you have to invest in this project mm -hmm. if you want to make it your full time job i definitely don't recommend you use one of those you know fully automated a to z but if you want to do this as a quick simple spend 10 minutes a day uh as a you know side hustle and maybe in 3 4 years from now maybe you'll get an account that you can make some money off of that might be perfect to get started with right right so right. Find something, a niche that you want to talk about and really, really, really look into the best tools for your particular um, let me, level let me, of, of work you want to put involved, your level of involvement in the process. Let me add to that, though. Don't get too caught up on that, right? Like, don't get too caught up to where you're trying to find the perfect, because a lot of times that happens, especially like with entrepreneurs who aren't that techie right they they get caught up in this process of trying to find the perfect tools and do the perfect post and like when it comes to social media put it's better to just put something out there 100 percent. get some results get some data analyze those results and that data and then put something else out there the next day right like 
a lot of times we'll spend months before we even do our first post trying to come up with the first perfect first post. And what you don't realize is that you can do all this research and shoot in two months, the algorithm completely changes. So you put out something that was great. It would have been great two months ago, but now it's not. And from a time set, and then you spend another two months trying to figure out what to do next, right? Like social media is speed and, 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 and the process is put something out there, analyze the results, analyze the return, take that process that, and then reiterate over and over and over again and yep. constantly start testing things, right? Like, I mean, look, if you can do the most basic post and just get it out there, well, now you have a baseline. So now the next post you do, you might want to change the headline or you might want to change the quality of the camera or the quality of the image or the quality of the audio or, you know, change the style of the, of the content, whatever it may be, right? But you don't really, you're not going to get to that point to where you're going to be able to make those decisions or make those pivots unless you have a baseline to, to kind of build off of. So I just wanted to. No, no, that, that's, that's really, out. really. Put yeah, something that's... out, start there, whatever, whatever tool you have at your disposal, use that tool right now. Don't wait till you get the perfect tool. Don't hold yourself back. Like, ah, oh, I need to save up a thousand trillion dollars so I can get this like <laughs> super automated power poster tool. Like, no, start with what you have. Look around for other things that can make things a little bit more efficient. But just don't let perfection be the enemy of progress. Sorry, I, did, I just wanted to. No, 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 no. That that's that's abs- that's absolutely amazing advice. Um, and even when it comes to just uh, researching the tools, there's going to be new tools in a new month, tool, in yeah, a week, exactly. a month, that's in it. two months. So find one that suits what you want to do right now, and just start using it. If you find a better one, cancel one subscription and switch over to start using another tool. If yeah. you're using an auto, if you're posting automatic or manually, and you want to post automatically, find a decent scheduler. You don't have to spend too much time and start using it. If you find a better one down the line, you can always switch over to the better one or to the different one because it might not necessarily be better. It might just do one thing that you need better than the other one does. Yeah. So you're always going to switch tools. You're always going to, there's always going to be new tools. You're always going to upgrade your flow and your process. So really at first, just kind of getting a base process down and really getting in the habit of it because social media is also all about consistency. So whether it's a faceless account or you're, you're on your, you know, your face is on the account, posting consistently and engaging with your audience is going to be the key element that's involved. So if it's, Something that's going to become overly time consuming, you're not going to want to keep doing it, especially if you're trying to do this on top of your normal everyday job. Like this is it's not your full time career to create content on social media. So. Like Ivan said, uh, get started, start posting, learn, iterate. And figure out what works and what doesn't work, because just because, you know, process A through Z worked for person one doesn't mean that's going to work for person two because it's a different niche. It's a different style of content that may need uh, to be put out to engage with that particular audience. Um, so, yeah, so I absolutely. So let's give a little bit more value, a little more value, a little, a little bit more. A little, I can give them the tools I use. Value. Um, yeah, what tools? Just give, give them a I'm, I'm going to give you a quick, some quick metrics. So I started a brand new faceless social account almost a week ago. It's Thursday right now at time of recording. I posted the very first video to this account last Friday. So it's just shy of a week old. Uh, Now, again, also remember, you're not going to blow up overnight because you're posting a lot. So I was doing four posts a day. I'm down to three posts a day. And I have 50 followers on the account. It's been a week. So you you might think, like, is it good? Is it bad? There's no real metric to determine that what's good or bad. Because I'm figuring out what type of content is going to resonate with the audience. But there's 50 followers. Uh, on average, it takes me about five minutes to put together a post. So I use ChatGPT to write my script. Mm-hmm. Uh, give me an image that I use the, that I could use that represents that script, one or two, depending on how many I need for that particular post, and some hashtags that are relevant to TikTok to the audience that might like the video. Not just about the video, not like hashtag motivation and all things related to motivation, but things that might res or uh, the hashtags that might target an audience who might like that content uh yogis people that like astrology or numerology right, right, uh, right. things like the hashtags should really really target the audience that may like the content that you're posting so right. all of that i generate just straight with chat gpt 
Uh, there are a few where I had to go use mid journey cause I, I got a little involved in trying different nonsense. Mm-hmm. Ivan knows sometimes I get a little too, uh, Rabbit hole. over wrapped <laughs> up in it. Yeah. It was, it was a story post and at any rate, <laughs> uh, so I use chat GPT fully for that. Then I take the script that it generates and I use a tool from a company called 11 labs and okay. 11 labs lets you do text to voice. And in my experience, they have the best text to voice voices that are that are available with ai today uh you can they're very editable you can create your own you can clone your own voice if you want it to sound like you and you could pick from thousands of different voices that are on there so going and finding the one that's going to work the best for your channels might take a little bit of time but once you find it you don't really have to change it much so i go i copy my script paste it into there generate the voice over for the video take the image or two that chat gpt generated and then i go over to a tool called CapCut. I use a lot of their pro features. I do have the pro version. It's, I don't know, $10 a month, $12. It's not a very large expense. Uh, But they also have a free version for a lot of this. So you don't need a lot of these pro features. But I'll go throw it in there. I'll throw in the voiceover, throw the images. And I'll just make some adjustments, maybe throw some effects. I'll have it auto-generate the captions for me. And I'll put the post together in CapCut. It takes me two, three minutes. Uh, The first couple of times is going to take a little bit longer because you're going to see what effects may work well for you, kind of come up with the style of the post that you're going to make. But once you have that down, bloop, 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 you have your post ready to roll. And then I put it into a social media publishing tool. I'm focusing on TikTok. The you can use actually use the Optimize Funnels AI system. That's one of our tools. It, it's an all encompassing marketing suite. But social media scheduling is one of those. Uh, I like to explore other tools in addition to ours, a lot of times to see if we can add some features into ours. So I'm right now using a tool called Buffer. It's been around for a long, long time, uh, lets you schedule posts. It's, I think it's like $6 a month for one social media channel. Uh, so again, not a very big expense. I think all in, I, between 11 Labs, Buffer, and CapCut Pro, I think I spend like $25 a month. Wow. And But I also use those same tools for other projects other things that i do so it's not like i'm only spending it on this free social media and there are free tools that you can use to do this process from a to z so that's my flow uh i'm working on it if you do want to see the channel it's on tiktok it's called motivational.rehab i'll put it down yeah, below I'll put, that link, take a look. Yeah, I'll put that in the link just let people kind of yeah see i'll put i'll is. put that down i'll put a link below if you want to take a look at it and watch it grow like i said i just started it i want to see what i can do with it um Using AI, every piece of content that's in there is generated by AI, uh, and I'm just putting together the final product. That's cool, man. I encourage everyone to follow, if you're, especially if you're interested. One of the best ways to learn about um, different ventures, different projects, you know, is just watching, seeing, seeing, seeing it in real time. So, like, if you want to see how a faceless YouTube page can grow and the potential and whatnot, can, that, or that not grow. Coming. This is an experiment. It could not grow. <laughs> it couldn't, but that's the thing. Like, exactly. Y'all, you guys all get firsthand seats to, to watch. This is something that was literally started a week ago. So you uh, go subscribe on TikTok and just watch, watch and see the type of videos, see the type of voices. He just gave you the whole process. Now start using that and imagining how you can apply that same concept, these same concepts to whatever niche or whatever hobby or whatever interests you. In your audience, that's really exactly. how it goes. And um, what did what, what, what the so uh, uh, an old entrepreneurial coach of ours used to say? What entrepreneurs? The best entrepreneurs are fast followers, or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast followers see what's being done and see what's working, and follow quickly behind. Do the same things. So you already know it's working, so you don't have to do like a market penetration test. Yeah, we don't have to research and know and to see if if um a faces YouTube or faces social media page works or makes sense or makes money, right? We already know that. We see enough people that are actually doing it. So, now it's really just kind of doing it yourself but with your own spin to it, with mm-hmm. your own flavor, with your own artistic vision. And two people don't please don't Please, please, please don't use the excuse or give yourself the excuse of, well, there's someone else already doing it or there's so many other people already doing it because no one's doing it like you. No one has your vision from A to Z in terms of like, one, the content, but two, 
how that con- content is structured, which content resonates with you specifically, right? Like we can all talk motivation, but we all have different aspects and ways of conveying our energy and our thoughts on motivation. Mm-hmm. So don't let competition like bother you because you're you. Even if, if that it, happened, we'd only ever be able to drive Fords because after the Model T came out, that would be it. Well, I can't make a car because he already makes one. There's already cars. Exactly. Like, there's yeah, no- open AI made an AI model. I guess I don't need to make one now. Exactly. Exactly. So like, that's the thing, man. At the end of the day, like put your stuff out there, your vision, your energy, your captions, the way you talk, even if you're using AI to create it all, just even the instructions that you give to the AI is going to be different than the instructions that the next person gives to the AI. So just trust in your uniqueness, trust in your uniqueness of your vision, of your content, of your messaging. And also just be yourself, be yourself. If you're you're goofy, be goofy. Like you're going to attract those who are goofy with you, right? Mm -hmm. If you're funny or snarky, be funny or snarky. Let that show in your content. Tell the AI to be funny and snarky because you're going to understand that style and you're going to be able to get better results than if someone's not naturally funny and snarky, but trying to pretend like they're funny and snarky to capture that audience, right? The genuine, the the person who's genuinely funny and snarky is going to capture and resonate with an audience that appreciates genuine funny and snarkiness. Exactly. Yeah. Be yourself. Be yourself. Embrace your yeah. embrace the traits and just the faceless it. part really just comes like make the video that you would want to make if you were to get on camera. Just let AI do that part for you. You don't have, you don't have to want... speak it. Just use AI to do the voiceover. Use imagery instead of your own voice to re- represent the message that you're trying to convey. That's all the faceless aspect of these types of channels is. It's still you at the end of the day relaying your message like Ivan said, like ChatGPT or the AI that you're using is really helping fine tune your message. Right. And even if it's not, even if you're not doing a faceless page. So for example, I'm, I'm starting multiple pages or I have pages and um, no, I'm not hesitant to get on camera, but at the same token, right. Like Chris said, posting deals with a lot of consistency. So I don't necessarily have the time to get on camera three, four times a day and post three or four videos of me speaking to people. Um, a day or I mean I even had that much to say that day right mm-hmm. but when you can add in other content generation met- methods such as like you know a couple faceless videos here and there a couple quotes here and there right and you can build that into a system especially if you can automate that system then it helps you greatly in terms of even if you do put your video on your your face on the channel it helps you create content helps you create that supplemental content right because again it can't always be you speaking every single video right and so right that's where understanding these concepts and understanding like these tools and being able to quickly bang out you know little quick content is is, is extremely helpful so funny enough after we finish this podcast chris is about to show me his uh his workflow for these faces videos and i'm about to start incorporating some of those into into my content yes sir right now what i generally do is i will just scroll through instagram and find content faceless content a lot right because i don't want to put someone else's face on i mean i do sometimes but a lot of times i just look for quotes i look for quotes or little just meaningful videos or uh just a lot 99 percent of the time it's faceless content Mm -hmm. somebody else's faceless content and i just share that because like i'm sharing the message i'm sharing what i want you know what i want to share with my audience but if i can start building that into what into my own workflow now I can share my own content and it just makes it even more efficient and more my message. Well, yeah, exactly. More like the message that you share may resonate with you, but like, you know, but if it said this instead of this, like if it was worded differently, it would mm-hmm. resonate better. So you can just make it worded the way you want now. Exactly. 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 So, but, um, so I think that's it y'all. That's uh, it. Another episode of AI for entrepreneurs. Um, today we talked about, what's happening in the world of AI dab with a little bit of Microsoft open AI open AI has um, some leaks. They're going to have to like <laughs> handle that, or we're going to have a whole lot more news next week in terms of all a bunch of other things. Right. So hopefully they, they get that handled or hopefully not for us. I mean, for us. Yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked about faceless YouTube, uh, faceless social media pages, um, yeah. tools that you use to create, create those as well. As the, yeah. YouTube's the on my list next. The YouTube's on my list next. Yeah, so um man, until next week, y'all. It's another it's been another week, episode 15 of AI for Entrepreneurs. 
Thank you for t- tapping in. Oh, if you missed AI Geek Week, if you missed AI Geek Week, yes. man, you know, we, we, we put together a huge week long event um, about two weeks ago. Um, yeah, about yeah, it. three weeks ago now. Yeah, about three access. weeks ago now. Yep, you can still access it. I just want to let you guys know the link will be somewhere below. But, yeah, down um, in the description. You can still access it. So now the really cool part is that it's the entire week's worth of content that you can access right now immediately for free, right? So, I mean, we had an event on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Thank you for describing a week. Yeah, it was a whole week. week. (laughs) And, um, yeah, so it was a week's worth of content as well as bonuses and all this extra cool stuff that you can get immediate access to for free. So if you're interested in artificial intelligence, if you like our perspective, our thought process on artificial intelligence, and you want to learn more about AI from, you know, from, just the beginning to some more advanced concepts. Uh, we covered so much during that week. We want to get this information into as many people's hands as possible. So please feel free, click the link below, get the information. Um, if you find it helpful, shoot us a message or follow on Instagram. I can be found at Ivan Lee Jackson, at Ivan Lee Jackson. Christopher Lang, what's your handle? Uh, at Christopher E. Lang on Instagram. Pretty much anywhere. It's at Christopher E. Lang. Yep. And um, that's it for housekeeping, y'all. Subscribe. Uh, uh, somewhere yeah. there's a button down over in that corner, I think. Somewhere. Uh, yeah, <laughs> somewhere under Ivan. Uh, go ahead, subscribe if you want to see more of this. Even if you don't, just subscribe anyway, because it helps us. So uh, that's it. We'll see you next week. Peace.